The short answer is no, but the right answer is, it really depends. The skin tone is all over the place, right? Right here it's a bit greenish, no I'm not talking about the brush stroke. Right here it's a bit yellowish, right here it's regular, right here it's desaturated. So how do you fix all of this? First of all, let's do it without any plugins. For it, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient map. Now what does gradient map do? Gradient map is simply a map for highlights, midtones, and shadows. And you can use this tool to map any color to highlights, midtones, and shadows. First of all, let's turn it off so that we can sample the skin tones. Then select the mask and then press Ctrl or Command I so that we can mask the skin tones. And then you want to make sure that the symbol, not the mask, is selected. Otherwise, it's only going to sample colors from the mask. Single click right over here. And then let's create a gradient for the skin tones. Let's select the right slider, single click on the color. You can also double click on the slider as well. And let's choose the highlights. So we're going to click right here. Let's choose this color as the highlight. That's fine. Hit OK. For the shadows, let's choose this dark color. Let's go with that. And for the midtones, let's create a slider in the middle and then single click on the color. And let's choose something like this. How do you feel about this? Hit OK. Now, what do we want to do with this gradient? We simply want to color the skin tone. Now, what's the blend mode that we're going to choose for it? You guessed it right. Color. Let's turn it on and change the blend mode from normal to color. Now select the mask, it's all black, so we need to bring the skin back in. Select the brush, make sure it is a soft round brush, foreground color white, and start painting. Now, how do you know you have chosen the right colors and created a good gradient? This is how you check. If you paint on the good areas where the skin tone is perfectly all right, it shouldn't change much. So right now I'm painting on this area, it's not changing much. That means we have chosen the best colors. Now let's paint all over the skin, take a look. It's correcting so beautifully. It's giving the skin tone so much uniformity. Now, some of you might say it's too uniform. Of course, it's too much. So let's go ahead and decrease the opacity to about 64. So here is the before. See, this area is desaturated. This area is green. But once you turn on the after, have a look at how uniform this is. This is a majestic result. So can we conclude that you don't need a plugin at all? Let us do the same thing with the plugin. But before it, let's save this as a snapshot as something that we can compare to. So let's go to history and click on this button that will save this moment in history as a snapshot right here. Now let's delete this gradient map layer and we're going to use the plugin called Infinite Unify. So let's go to plugins, Infinite Unify. Let's open that up. Once you install the plugin, it would be right there. Choose what kind of skin tone this is, dark, medium or bright. So let's go with dark and click on create and it's done. That's pretty much all you needed to do. Let us take a look at the before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. The mask is also in place. Now, of course, the mask is not perfect. You might have to correct it, but take a look at it. It's amazing. Right here, I feel that we need to correct the mask. So I'm going to paint this area. How about we compare these results with the manual method that we tried earlier? This is about to get spicy. So let's go to history, click on this button. This is snapshot number two. This used the plugin. This was manual. So there you go, my friend. This is the manual one. This is the one with the plugin. They are very, very close. Now you might say the plugin is a bit desaturated. No problem with that. So you can open up Infinite Unify and you can change the hue, luminosity and saturation of all of these colors. So you don't have to go back. You don't have to select these individual colors and change them. You can change all of them all at once. So let's open up the plugin. We can just increase the saturation of everything if you wish. You can change the hue. You can modify it to your liking. You can change the luminosity. It's all up to you. Now, that is not all. That's absolutely not all. If you're somebody who likes to get into the details, this feature is going to be mind changing, life changing. <laughs> That's what separates this plugin from the entirety of Photoshop when it comes to skin color correction or modification. Have a look at this button right there. If you activate this, once you apply the skin tones, it will bring up the gradient editor. And it's one of the most advanced skin color gradient editor I've ever seen. Take a look at this. So let's click on create and have a look at this. This is a gold mine right here. But before we do any of this, first of all, let's close it and correct the mask because there are changes we can do directly here as well. So as you can see, the mask is not perfect. So let's fill up the rest of the areas. The reason I'm doing this is because we want to see the changes real time in all of the areas accurately. So it's done. In this example, what we primarily want is that the skin tone of the face should match with that of the body. And for it, you can also try increasing the opacity to 100. And you want to make sure that the blend mode is set to color and you can change the blend mode from this button. So this is for saturation. This is for color. This is for hue. So let's change it to color. 
you don't have to click on the drop down and choose any of those. Now keep in mind we can always decrease the opacity but for right now let's keep it at 100 so that we can see the changes more clearly. Now let's start the magic with what you can do inside of this plugin without getting into the gradient editor. Have a look at this gradient that it has created. If there's some color that you don't like in this gradient you can actually change it or say to the plugin that remove that and bring out an average of the surrounding colors. So all you need to do is to hold the alt key or the option key and click on the color that stands out. For example this color. You can click on any color that stands out to you or you don't want in your gradient and then click on it again gone all of those colors that were standing out gone anything that you don't like for example you don't like this tone you can also just click on it and that will take it away now let's work with the gradient editor let's see what it can do make sure that this button is activated then click on create and right here you have the chart of all the colors that it has used to create this gradient just a side note before you come running after me there are two ways to open up the gradient editor the first way is keeping this button activated and then every time you click on create it will open up the gradient editor the other way is as you're making adjustments and you want to open gradient editor in between you can just right click right here it will open up the gradient editor. The hue and the saturation graphs are very interesting. Take a look at these deviations in both hue and saturation. They tell you what color stands out more or less from the average in terms of hue and saturation. For example, we can clearly see that this color is standing out from the surrounding areas and it's clearly depicted in those graphs as well. Have a look at the saturation. It deviates that much from the average and the hue also changes a little bit from the average. Now, once you click on it, have a look. It stops to stand out and look at the graphs. They are lower and closer to the base as well. Similarly, take a look. This color clearly is standing out and you can clearly see right here that the saturation of this color is more than the surrounding areas. You can click on that. That is fixed. Now it's completely an artistic choice as to what you want to do with your gradient for your image and for your style. Now, whatever you do is shown real time right here. So if you take it away, have a look, it changes the image slightly right there. So for example, I think this color doesn't belong to the highlights. So I'm going to click on that and we have a smoother gradient. Now, there's another way to increase the smoothness. If you click on create one more time, because we have already clicked on most of them and made that smooth. Have a look at the smoothness slider. If you increase it, see the deviations decrease and you get a smoother gradient. If that's not what you want, you would decrease the smoothness. So that's how you can produce results according to your taste. If you increase the smoothness, you would notice a smoother gradient. If you decrease the smoothness, some colors would stand out. Have a look right here. I don't know if you can see this. There's a very harsh transition right there. So you can control the global smoothness or click on single colors to fix just the exact transitions that you want. Now, one of the other features that is hard to do in Photoshop is controlling the saturation of shadows mid-tones and highlights separately. Now, of course, there's a way to do it. You can always use blend ifs, you can always choose individual colors, but it's not as easy as in the gradient editor of Infinite Unify. So you can decrease the saturation of just the shadows. So if we do this, see, the skin tone becomes more and more natural. There you go. We can control it in the mid-tones as well. I want a little bit more. And in the highlights, we might want it a little bit less to add some shine to it and maybe with a little more smoothness. That's a fantastic gradient. Let's go with this. And of course, in the end, you can always decrease the opacity. I think I'm gonna go with 60 and that creates a very, very natural look. So here is the before. As you can see, the skin tones are all over the place. The body is a completely different color. And once you turn it on, everything is equalized and you can just go in there and do how many ever changes you want. So it depends upon who you are. And that's why I said it depends in the beginning. If you are a professional and you want super fast results, accurate results, and you don't want to compromise with the quality, this looks like an excellent plugin. But wait, can it handle extreme scenarios or extreme color shifts? Let's take a look. Now here we want to remove the color cast created by the green sun visor. I got this idea from one of the videos of Infinite Unify when I was researching. So first of all, let's choose the bright skin tones, click on create. Let's see what it does. Now one of the best things that I like about this plugin is that it always chooses the good skin tones. It doesn't pick skin tones from areas which have color shifts or color cast or any of that. So right now, the skin tone choice is all right. Have a look, it's fantastic. But the masking is not all right. I have a feeling that it's using the masking from the color range. So if you come back to this layer, if you go to select and then color range, and let's go ahead and choose skin tones. Have a look at it. It is the exact same thing, but we don't want this. We want this particular area, which has the color cast in it. So first of all, let's turn it on. To view the mask, hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the mask to view it. Now press Ctrl or Command A to select all. Press Alt Backspace to fill it with foreground color. Make sure the foreground color is black. 
Alt Backspace. By the way, if you want to fill it with the background color, press Control Backspace. Press Control or Command D to deselect. Now hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the mask back again to view the less. Now select the brush, foreground color white now. I'm pressing X to toggle between the foreground and background. And then let's paint this area. Now you can correct the eyes separately later. We're just gonna focus now on the skin tones. Now right now it's not completely removing it. How do we do that? For it, let's increase the opacity to 100. But I feel that the saturation is too much. You might have noticed that shadows have low saturation. So for it, open the gradient editor by right clicking right here and let's decrease the saturation of the shadows. So let's decrease it just right there. This seems to be about right. And there are some colors that actually stand out too much. Click on that. It's smoother now. This color stands out way too much. You can also increase the smoothness from right here. There you go. That looks like a better gradient. And there you have it. Looks fantastic. You can decrease the saturation even more if you wish. There you go. Now I like this feature a lot because it doesn't affect the rest of the areas, only mostly the shadow areas. If you didn't want to completely remove it, you can always decrease the opacity, but this is just for demonstration. Now let me share with you a little trick. If you want the eye whites to be of the same gradient as the teeth, as they closely resemble each other, let's try this. Let's make a selection of these areas. We don't want any of the tongue. Let's select a little more of the shadows so that we have a complete range for the gradient. Now hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on Create. That way it will create another infinite unify layer. And as you can see, it turns everything white because it just sampled the colors of the teeth. Now all you need to do is to turn this on as well, first of all. Select the mask, Controller Command I. We only wanted it in the eyes. Take the brush, white as the foreground color, just paint over the eyes. And there you go. Look at the eye whites. They look so much more natural. Now, if you want, you can always go to saturation and decrease the overall saturation. You can increase the opacity from right here. There we go. So fixed. Similarly, you can do the eyeballs. You can do the eyebrows all up to you. The plugin has everything you need to get the skin tones right in just one place. Whether you want a one click fix or you want to modify the skin tones after the fact, that is possible. By the way, if you want to learn about each and every button inside of the plugin, you can look over their manuals, but this video answers just one question and that is, do you really need a plugin? So let's find out if we can apply those hue, saturation and luminosity adjustments easily without the plugin as we were doing in the plugin. So in this example, we want to match the skin tone of the baby to that of the boy. Let's do it first with the plugin, but before it, Huge thanks to Mieth for contributing this image. Thank you so much. You can check out her work right over here. Now, if you open up the plugin and you click on create, it will take into consideration the skin tones of the boy and the baby as well. But we only want certain skin tones to be considered. And how do we do that? That is also possible. Select the lasso tool or any selection tool of your choice and make a rough selection of the skin tones you want. This seems about right. And then you click on create. There you go. It applies the skin tone overall. Now, since a selection was made, it's not going to create a mask right here. So select the mask and then press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Take the brush, white as the foreground color and simply paint on the baby. Now the skin tones are matching, but the baby's face is not bright enough. So we can go to luminosity and try to do that. But a better solution would be just simply creating a curves because the blend mode is color and the color blend mode does not change the brightness of an image. So let's create a curves adjustment layer and we can have the same mask. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, click and drag and drop right here. Yes, we want to replace it now. Let's take it up just like this. And it's pretty much matching, not that much. Let's come back to Infinite Unify. Let's open that up. I feel the saturation is too much. So let's go to saturation. Let's simply decrease that. And as you do, it begins to match more and more. I think this is perfect. We can leave it at that. And if you don't want it in the extreme bright or extreme dark areas, here's the trick. Click on this button. It applies a blend if, and this is not just preset. Have a look at it. So this was before blend if, this is after blend if. Look how natural this looks now. So it's up to you whether you want to do it or not. If you open up the Blend If, have a look. This is not a preset. If you apply it to some other image, these values would be different. So if we had applied to this particular image, let's apply Blend If by clicking on this and take a look at the values. Completely different from the values right here. So that is a major, major plus for this plugin. Now, of course, you can modify it. Nobody's stopping you from doing that. I would modify it just like this, hit OK. That looks nicer to me. So the Blendif function inside of the plugin considers what kind of skin tone you have chosen and accordingly 
chooses the values. So that's what I really like about this. And that I think gives you a fantastic starting point, which is not a preset. Now let's do the same thing without the plugin and let's see if we can easily modify the hue and the saturation like we did in this case. Before we do it manually, let's save it as a snapshot. Let's go to history, click on this button, and this is done with the plugin. Now for a fair comparison, I'm also gonna copy the mask for later use. So I'm selecting it all and pressing Ctrl or Command C so that when we do apply manually, we have the same mask so that the comparison is right. Now let's go ahead and delete both of them. Press Ctrl or Command D. Now create a gradient map right here. Let's turn it off. Select the mask, hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the mask. Now let's paste the previous mask in the exact same location. For it, press Ctrl, Shift and V. There you go. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now select the symbol so that we can sample the skin color. And you can turn this on if you wish because it's already masking that particular area. So single click on right there. For the right slider, let's pick this highlight. This seems to be about right. Hit OK. For the left one, I think this area would be fine. There we go. Hit OK. And for the midtones, let's create a mid slider in the middle. Let's go with this particular color. Hit OK. There you go, my friend. This already looks similar. Now we need to change the blend mode from normal to color. We don't want to have that much opacity. So let's go ahead and decrease it to about 60 as a starting point. Now let's create a curves adjustment layer to have a fair comparison. We should copy the same curves from the previous state. So let's go to history. If we open up the plugin snapshot, we want the same curves. So select the curves adjustment layer, press Ctrl or Command C, and let's get back to our current state and press Ctrl or Command V. Have a look, the mask is not at the same position. To make sure anything that you place in Photoshop to be at the same location, you need to press Ctrl, Shift and V. Command, Shift, V. There you go. It's at the same location, done. Now, how do we modify it if we were doing it manually without the plugin? How about we create a hue saturation adjustment layer and clip it to the gradient map by clicking on this button right there. We have now control over the hue, saturation and lightness. So let's go ahead and decrease the saturation. There we go. And it pretty much matches. If you wanted to change the hue, that is also possible from right here. Done. Now, of course, you have to do the blend ifs manually. So you have to double click on the right hand side of the layer. You have to take it away from the highlights, take it away from the shadows. That's up to you. So I'm going to leave it at that and hit OK. And I like this result. So this, my friend, is our manual creation. By the way, we didn't want to color the lips. We didn't want to take away the reds from the lips. So let's go to the mask, take the brush black as the foreground color and just erase the lip areas. There you go. Now let's compare. Let's create a snapshot. And this is the one that we created manually. Now we have to admit that it takes time. It takes a little bit of skills, but if you compare it just for the sake of comparison, here is the plugin one. Here is the manual one. It's pretty much identical. Now where it actually starts being different from the manual method is when you start tinkering with the gradients. So let's right click right there. Opens up the gradient editor. There are a couple colors that stand out. So we're going to click on that. Now, if you want to make it absolutely similar to the boy on the right, let's start playing with the saturations of different areas. So if we start decreasing the saturation of the midtones, it gets a little closer. Now let's try to do the same with the shadows. There you go. Now let's play with the hue. Let's take it a little more towards the right. And you might want to increase the smoothness. Let's see what it does. You want a smoother gradient, something like this. Now on top of it, you can of course control the global saturation. And there we go, looking natural and fantastic. So here comes the big question. Is this for you? If you're a professional photographer or a retoucher, what are you waiting for? This is one of the most important tools that you can have in your arsenal. Just for the gradient editor, I'll just pay the full amount. Actually, I'll pay double of it. I was so excited. I mean, this kind of control is really insane and genius to look at the deviations as to how much each color stands out. You can control the saturation of different sections, the smoothness of the entire gradient, the hue and the luminosity, everything real time. I, I don't have to make a case for it. Just, this is just incredible. Of course, it gives you results super fast, creates an amazing starting point with just one click. It saves you time. And most importantly, you don't have to do any of the guesswork for choosing the highlights, midtones, and shadows. In this case, you not only have highlights, midtones, and shadows, but the entire plethora of colors that you can choose from. I don't usually say this often, but this is the best skin tone color correction software or program or panel I've ever come across. So it has almost everything built in that you need for skin color correction 
correction and modification just in one place. And if you're interested in getting Infinite Unify, you can check the description for the updated links and codes to get the best discounts. However, if you are a beginner, I would highly recommend that you first understand the concept of gradient maps, learn how blend modes work, and then learn how to get the skin tones right without using any of these plugins, which we have also discussed in this video. I strongly recommend watching this video on the science behind all 27 blend modes and the exact math behind some of them. So do watch this after this video. Thank you so much for watching this one. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.